Okay, hey guys, and welcome to another free Clubhouse presentation by yours truly, Liam Bowen. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, if you're in Europe at the moment, then, uh, well, for me at least, it's extremely, extremely cold in Tirana. We had a couple of lovely days of, uh, of summer. It was beautiful, getting some sunlight, getting outside, getting grounded with my feet. Electrons, we're going to talk a bit about electrons today, and we're going to talk about how almost every single form of stress relief Okay, I guess you could say stress release and uh, stref, stress relief, I learned to speak English today, fundamentally it comes down to uh, electrons. We're going to talk about cranial sacral therapy, we're going to talk about meditation, and we're going to talk about what people usually see online. So one thing that I, I've spoken about this before, and I think that I spoke about this on my very, very first clubhouse that I did. And these are the two words uh, which I actually, unfortunately, they're a telltale sign that someone who's following me is just not doing the work. Uh, and by not doing the work, I mean, they might be watching my videos, they know who I am, they might even know what to do, but they're just not doing it. And that's because they think that they're different. And the reason that they think that they're different is because they have been absolutely fundamentally and consistency, consistently lied to about what tinnitus is, okay? So the etiology of tinnitus, we've spoken about this before if you remember, so what causes the onset of tinnitus? ENTs will tell you it's broken hair cells, I'll tell you that's ridiculous, like that's make-believe, like you've just gone through the wardrobe into the realm of Narnia and Mr. Tumnus has given you a lecture on the etiology of tinnitus. Shut up Mr. Tumnus, it's, it's bullshit, not true at all. And uh, also the prognosis, which is what will happen. Okay, so the etiology is what causes tinnitus. Uh, the, the diagnosis is that you have tinnitus. And the prognosis is what is the outcome likely to be. And the prescription, of course, is what are we going to do about it. So ENTs will tell you there's nothing you can do. Tinnitus forums like Tinnitus Talk will tell you there's nothing you can do. Every other forum on the internet will tell you there's nothing you can do. Random influencers and YouTubers will tell you that there's nothing you can do. So what are you going to think about your tinnitus when you keep hearing this over and over again? And remember, the, uh, big, the most effective form of mind control and persuasion is simple repetition. Why do you think every day we see on, on the news, be afraid, take the jab, people are dying, shut the fuck up, okay? That's bullshit. If you read the numbers out, there's nothing going on, okay? It's all fucked. Anyway, so... <laughs> Back to tinnitus, okay? It's absolutely ridiculous, and it puts you in a state of fear. So this comes back to the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Now, we've spoken about this. I haven't spoken about this for a long time, actually, but I used to speak about it in my previous videos. There are other people who deal with tinnitus who deal solely with the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. And... Yes, they play a role, but however, I think just focusing solely, which means only, only on those things is an absolute, as I said, disservice to people with tinnitus. Because yes, you can rectify the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system by proper regulation of hormones and enzymes. You know, things like reducing your intake of iron, increasing your intake of copper, increasing your intake of magnesium, all different five forms, as well as Decreasing your intake of calcium are really, really good things you can do. If you're listening to the replay of this right now, you might want to rewind that, listen to that again, take notes and do what I say, okay? Because when it comes to stress relief, you go on the internet and what do you see, okay? Even outside of the realm of tinnitus. In my opinion, you see coping mechanisms, you see meditation, you see acupuncture, you see ayahuasca retreats. Now, I am not saying that these things cannot help people because obviously they do. Obviously they do. I've got a, um, I've got a friend of mine actually story about ayahuasca. Now I've never personally done ayahuasca. I've done other things, but um, you know some people have really benefited from ayahuasca. I have had people with tinnitus do ayahuasca, and I've never had anyone with tinnitus benefit from ayahuasca. Maybe there have been, but I mean I figured I probably would have heard about it by now if there's anything significant. But a friend of mine back in Melbourne used to go all the time, which I thought was a bit of overkill, but you know, it helped him, so whatever. 
And he would go to these, you know, he had to be invited to these retreats and you go to these places in Australia and it's on Aboriginal land and the elders let you use it and you go and apparently, you know, they make the stuff and you, it's three days and you do two doses of ayahuasca on one dose on the first night or one session on the first night. I'm butchering this. Anyone here who's done it, I haven't would know one dose on the second night. And then on the third night, so the third day you take mescaline, which is when they get this shoot and they blow it up your nose or something and you all go down to a waterfall and, you know, hold hands and talk about your feelings. And that's great. That, that surely helps people. And I've even heard stories of people who used to live in communist Russia came over to Australia and they used ayahuasca as a means for trauma. But when it comes to actually fixing tinnitus, okay, I obviously am not going to recommend that anyone does any form of psychedelics. It's up to them. Um, there are people, however, like David Nutt, K-N-U-T-T, who were talking about the therapeutic uses of MDMA. You know, the drug, MD and I'm going to get to tinnitus, but this is important information for you guys just to know. I'm saving you the hours of research, by the way. MDMA, the actual name for MDMA, you know what it used to be called? It used to be called empathy. Really? Um, and anyone who's done those sorts of drugs will know that when you take it, you, you, you do become more empathetic and you do sort of, you just, you give a shit about other people. And so it used to be used in marriage counseling. So it used to be used when, you know, generally the man wouldn't listen and the woman felt unheard, which is like, you know, <laughs> it's until the end of time, right? <laughs> and so you used to use it for that. Uh, and I, it has, drugs have been used in the past for tinnitus with no significant results. So what is tinnitus if not a stress problem? And why is it so, there's, there's this theory that if I can, oh, I can just relax my nervous system, if I can just bring down my, so the parasympathetic nervous system is going to raise cortisol and stress hormones and markers and the parasympathetic, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the, para, the, the sympathetic nervous system is the one that will make you stressed and the parasympathetic nervous system one will be the one that will reduce your stress. So I want to give you an example as to when people say, oh, I'm going to re relax you. It really has to do fundamentally with the subatomic particles known as electrons and the mitochondria. Again, we go back to the mitochondria. So did you guys know, let's say you take a session of cranial sacral therapy. Cranial sacral therapy, which is when you lay on your back and somebody puts their hands under your back and your spine and your head and they move around and I'm obviously not doing this service and that is not the whole process, but um, it benefits people with tinnitus. Why is that? Why is it that that specific procedure of being touched on, on the, um, the top of the spinal cord and the back of the head benefits people with tinnitus, meaning it reduces it? You know why? There is something called a cranial sacral pump. If you read Jerry Tennant's book, Healing is Voltage, which you should have done, or Voltage, yeah, Healing is Voltage, which you should have read by now. I've been talking about it for years. You should read that book. There is a cranial sacral pump, and when you get a, when you get a um, cranial sacral therapist treat you properly, they know what they're doing gently. I wouldn't recommend people go and get their necks cracked. That's awful, um, in my opinion. I've just seen people have horrible results with it tonight from it. When you get that process done, you actually shoot electrons down. Uh, your fascia of your body, your fascia acts like a runway for electrons, by the way, it, it, they travel extremely fast at the speed of lightning. They travel down your fascia into your brain and electrons always flow to a deficit. So if you have tinnitus, guess where the electrons are going? Nervous system, brain, cochlea, vestibular cochlear nerves, that's where they're going. So I do recommend that getting that sort of done, uh, thing done. But when it comes to actually having a stressful life, and hold on, I'm just going to Okay, someone's raised their hand. Here we go, skinny kid again. Hopefully this works. Hello. Hey. Hey man, what's going on? I can. Uh, I can, how, how are you? I just woke up. Uh, oh, no. nice man. Are you, uh, yeah. are you in America or whereabouts are you? I'm in Canada. Oh, how's the uh, how's the whole trucker thing going? You following that or? Uh, not really. I mean, mm. I don't, I don't know. I don't really follow it much. Okay, that's cool. 
All right. Uh, do you have a question or something or any input or what's going yeah. on? Yeah, I was okay. So I know you said you fix people with head injuries with tinnitus. Yeah. And uh, have you ever heard of tinnitus coming on like six months or some months after a head injury? Uh, no, I don't think I've, I've heard of it. Like, are we talking like a concussion or something like that? Well, Is that I got a, into a fight when I was like last over a year ago and the guy got on top of me and just pounded my head in like forehead and nose. Wow. Okay. And, you got, you took a beating. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I even still have head pain to this day and I, oh. I'm wondering, I'm just wondering if it's like related to tinnitus. Uh, well, did the, did the tinnitus come on, uh, six months after the head injury? Is that what happened? Yeah. Around six months. Uh, is the head injury getting worse? Are you having more pain? Do you have sinus problems? Do you breathe through your mouth now? Uh, I don't know if I have a clogged nose. I think it's always been this like sort of clogged, but I remember like around a month ago it was so bad. I couldn't yeah. even uh t touch the my tongue to the roof of my mouth i couldn't even eat soup like i couldn't chew a thing like the amount of yeah. pain i'd get in the top of my head it was unbearable but now it's calmed yeah. down so it seems to randomly spike sometimes i can't wear my blue bloggers because of the the pain my nose right. is... it sounds do you know what skull plates are yeah yeah, so the the skull is actually it's not set in place, so we can actually move. Like if you if you I'll just I'll just explain it to you again and the people listening. Your skull kind of works like tectonic plates. So you know how on the Earth we have all these big, huge tectonic plates. Like I believe they're like hundreds of miles wide or miles wide, and they kind of converge together. And when they push together, they don't match. One goes up and one goes down. So maybe when that guy gave you a beating. Uh, it could have caused some problems there. Have you had like an MRI or a CAT scan or anything like that done on your head? No, I haven't. Going? I was going, I got a, a referral for one. They haven't even called me, but I've also been scared about getting an MRI because all the EMFs and crap like that. Yeah, look, I'll be honest with you. There is a lot of um, EMF that goes on in MRIs, but by the sounds of your symptoms, man, I think you're going to have to go and get it. You know, like if you're, yeah. if you, if you're getting worse and you're having pain, Hey, have you, what about um, any, any other steps in my advice? Like, have you applied any, anything? I know you were showing me, you're the guy who was showing me all the, um, the power boards in your room and things like that, correct? Like all the electric, electricity and yeah. stuff and you were getting rid of that. So I know you're doing that. Are you doing, how old are you, by the way? I'm 22. Okay, nice. Yeah, look, man, to be honest with you, the first thing I would do is I would call those people back and I would get an MRI as soon as possible. Because you could have like a, a small, like a hairline fracture or something like that. And if you couldn't even wear your blue blockers, man, it doesn't sound good. Yeah. So you at least want to get it checked out. Like, do you have the money to pay for it or you live with your parents or something? Oh, yeah, or... yeah. I, I live with my mom right now. Right. Okay. So she can, she can, because I know in, in America, the medical system is expensive, but in Canada, is it the same sort of thing or? Uh, you get covered for some things, but then other things you got to pay for. I understand. I don't really know exactly. Yeah, well, look, to answer your question, yeah, it seems like there's definitely a connection there, like definitely. Um, because, to the tinnitus? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah, because I have had people who have had concussions and head injuries and, you know, injuries at work and injuries playing NFL and things like that, and they come to me, and yeah, they get fixed uh, for sure. But I will tell you, man, they all got x-rayed and they all got um, MRIs and whatever the doctor thought. So and they all think... They all, found, they all found something like wrong? No, none of them did actually. None of them found anything. So, but you do want to get that cleared up um, because, you know, you just, want to, you just want, it's like a process of, when you have a physical injury like that, it's like a process of elimination. You just want to, you just want to make sure that there's nothing there that's causing any problems, like a bit of bone that's come off or something. I, I'm kind of painting a scary picture. I'm sure you're fine, by the way, because, you know, you're a young guy. You can take a beating. I was a young guy once too, man. You know, I used to get in fights all yeah, the time. Yeah, I, I got a big head too, like a thick skull, so. Yeah, you'll be fine. But, but still, just, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to have that in the back of your head, um, think, like thinking about that in the back of your head going, oh shit, like what if there's something wrong? You know, you kind of want. And, oh and yeah, I always think about that. It's just weird how it spikes, like, and then, the, like, and then it just goes away like the head, like some days I won't even think about the head pain. 
and then other days it'll just be so bad I can't even wear my glasses. It's weird. Where, where does it hurt? Uh, so the pain goes from my nose and to my forehead and to the top of my head and it like alternates. Yeah, you, look, I'll be honest with you. I don't know too much about uh, physical pain and things like that, so I won't pretend that I do, but I would, I would, see, a, I would see a chiropractor for sure, uh, after you get the x-rays. Because if you go and see a chiropractor, they're just gonna tell you to get an x-ray anyway. So once you get, I would go and see a chiropractor. Also, um, have you seen my Tinnitus documentary? Yeah, on my YouTube? I actually yeah, watched did... it like a few days ago. Oh, great, yeah. So you saw that doctor, uh, I believe his uh, name was Jim. Jim McCarty, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, talks... I was following him, yeah. Yeah, and he talk... he's got a YouTube channel and he talks about skull plates and things like that. So. That might be something you have to do, especially if it's getting worse, man. You want to get that, you know, you don't want to just let that ride. You want to fix it as soon as you can. So, yeah, man, um, I would say that tinnitus is connected to the injuries. If you're getting physical pain, you definitely want to get an x-ray. Yeah, man, that's that's what I would do. So you think you, I should, uh, like, see a, ch a chiropractor that can, like, help with the skull plates sort of thing? Like Yeah, abso absolutely, I do. Yeah. But um, I would, what I would do, man, is, I mean, it depends how long it's going to take you to get an x-ray. Um, but, you know, if it's going to take like three months to see an x-ray, then you might as well see a chiropractor in the meantime and tell them. Because they're going to they're gonna be able to tell you how to fix that. I can tell you that I think it's connected to your tinnitus injury, but they're the ones who are going to be able to probably fix that problem. If that makes sense. It's also, it's, I think it's a combination of things. Because when I got tinnitus, I think I had COVID. Right, and okay. Then my mom thought it was a ear infection and then she gave me antibiotics. Oh which yeah. Made what, it even way, what, way worse. Right. Okay, did she give you like amitriptyline or something like it that? It was amoxicillin, amoxicillin and then that, sorry, not I, Yeah. And I took like a small course of amoxicillin it didn't do anything so then she gave me doxycycline. I took Yeah. Half sorry, go the on. course of that. It was a 30-day yeah. course. I took 14 pills and I just I couldn't sleep the nights was so bad. I was like, and then I looked it up yeah. online. I was like, are these connected? And I found out that it causes tinnitus and I freaked out. I was so upset. Yeah. No, it's okay. You could do it. It's reversible. Don't worry about it. It's fixable. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're probably going to need you. What you should do, man, is you should go and get some living probiotics. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Yeah. I have a bunch of probiotics in my fridge. I don't think like, they're Take living. It, All probiotics are living, right? Uh, no, there are some that aren't living because the, the one you want the ones that are in the refrigerator, the ones yeah, that, the one, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, you want to take those. So if you've completely destroyed your, what antibiotics do, man, is they completely, it's, they do so much shit. Like they, they're neurotoxic, first of all. So they'll probably cause a bit, this is all fixable, by the way, don't freak out. They're neurotoxic. So they've probably done some damage to your brain and your vestibular cochlear nerve. It's all fixable. Uh, they destroy your gut bacteria. So you can't properly <laughs> digest food. They, I mean, and they also cause a bit of uh, damage directly to um, the cochlea as well, but that's all fixable as well. They're so bad. And especially antibiotics are just, what's the word I'm looking for? Like synonymous with tinnitus. Like anything with mycin in the name, uh, doxycycline, gentamicin, uh, amoxicillin. I said amitriptyline before, but that's a sleep medication. But um, if you, yeah, you know, everyone gets a virus and gets sick eventually, but taking antibiotics for it is not a good idea. What I you know. should, what, that, but that's okay. What you should do, um, I have a, oh, you know, I've got some here. I'll tell you what to do, okay? <clears throat> you might have some viral residue in you. So I'm just going to list off a couple of things that you can do, okay? So the first thing that you want to do, um, and talk to your doctor before you do this, is you want to avoid foods with arginine in them and consume more lysine. This is to kill any residual viral particles. Okay. Yeah, I've been taking. I've been actually taking lysine for quite a while. Yeah, take it, man. Um, Keep next taking thing, it. Yeah, t you know, as I said, speak to your doctor, but I would take it. I take it nearly every day. Um, oregano oil. You, you can. You know. You know what an inhalation is. Yeah, when I say that. Uh, no. Okay, so an inhalation is when you get like a big bowl and you put all these different drops of herbs. So some of the herbs I'll tell you now, oregano, lavender, tea tree, sage, rose hip, uh, evening primrose oil, things like that. You can just put a, one drop of each in the bowl and then you fill it with boiling water and then you cover it with a tea towel and you kind of do like those 
native Indian smoke signals and you inhale the, the smoke and the steam into your, into your nasal cavities. Okay, and that should help kill any residual viral mm. particles. It also might help with your head pain. Who knows? Like you might have an that, infection. It, it, also yeah. might, it also might help with your head pain. You could, have an, you could have a residual infection in there that is just festering and you need to kill it and get it out. I don't know. You know, you've got to get an x-ray and talk to the, the um, chiropractor. Um, but um, yeah, man, the, get the probiotics and take all that stuff. But take it slow, man. <laughs> I'm not telling you to go to a supermarket and start taking 30 pills a day. <laughs> you know, don't do that. Take yeah. it very slow. Yeah, so man. every chiro- you think every chiropractor knows about like these skull place things? Like no, no, they don't. You, you, you're going to have to shop around and, and see. A cervical chiropractor is probably going to be your best bet as someone who's most likely going to be aware of the skull plates, because chiropractors are still taught that the that the, um, I think after the age of like 15 or something that the skull plates don't move, but they move for the entirety of a person's life. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to find someone who's been educated the right way. You know, just just yeah. some sim- just some simple googling will probably help you with that. So, sir, okay, my mom's actually a cranial sacral therapist. Oh, and, there uh, you go. We we're just but, talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I tried like she's giving me treatments, but one time after a treatment, I noticed my tinnitus actually got worse. Yeah. See, I, I was going to talk about that um, as we got as we went on with this talk, as this live talk, because that's common. That that happens to people, and I'm not sure exactly why that is but that's why i tend to tell people you know cranial sacral therapy acupuncture um things like you know when you see those videos online if we get the next cracked it's often a very bad idea for people with tinnitus like but look sometimes people get their neck adjusted and it's worse straight away and then the tinnitus goes down to lower than it is but i just tell people you know stay away you know do do the other stuff i tell people to do it's Um, safer yeah. Uh, what What do you think about what's it called? Like, uh, what's that word? It's like something to do with cranial sacral therapy, where like you hover your hands like over the person and try to like release mm. pressure. Reiki. Reiki. Yeah, like Reiki therapy, kind of. What are uh, your thoughts on that? Because my mom does that. She's tried it on me. We've done it like a few treatments for like the yeah. head of pain. Look, I um, mean. I- I don't want to dismiss anything just because I don't understand it and I don't understand it. But I do know that, you know, as humans, we're all energy and we're subatomic particles and we're mostly empty space. And I, I don't understand much about it, but I don't see any harm in it, to be honest. So if you want to do Reiki yeah, and like, do that, yeah, go. For, I, I know what it is. I had, I had a friend in my old high school, Alana, who um, actually does that full time in Melbourne. And she says she helps people. I don't know how much is placebo and I don't know how much of it works, but you know, if, if you want to do it, man, I don't see any harm in it at all. Go for it. You know, but I wouldn't, I, I, you'd probably think like I shouldn't rely on that for the, no, I should see a chiropractor. Yeah. That that would be a bad idea. Yeah. I, I would, I, because it sounds like what you're going through is going to require a lot more than, you know, I guess I'd call Reiki some form of like energy healing. You know, you, look, look, dude, when it, comes to, when it comes to tinnitus and most symptoms, you don't want to rely on one single thing. And I don't know if you caught the, um, the front end of this talk I was giving, but I was speaking about how people who, folk, who just rely on solely on one thing, whether it's acupuncture or cranial psychotherapy or meditation or ayahuasca, to fix tinnitus, it generally doesn't work. Because, you know, fixing tinnitus and probably it's going to be the same thing, fixing your head pain is going to need a a combination of many things, all of which you can just find on my Instagram and and start doing. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. It's just, it's shit though. Outside, it's so cold. I can't ground. Like, can you, You I've heard like you can't produce vitamin D in winter. Is that true? No, that's not true at all. No. As long as you, look, vitamin D3 is synthesized from cholesterol. So as long as you're eating as much animal fat and you have that adequate amounts in your body and your liver makes 70% of the cholesterol you need. And then you expose yourself to the sun while reducing salicylate in your diet, which compromises your skin's ability yeah. to make. It's, yeah, you can. I mean, look, it doesn't, it's, just, it's not impossible, but um, it's going to be harder. Look, you can also get vitamin D from organs. So if eat liver, man. You know, if you can find yeah, liver over where, where is, Oh, sorry. But yeah, I take liver supplements. The shitty part is, is that... I can't chew hard meats like because of the head pain, so I have to only chew soft things. Like I, I can't eat steak, even oh, like man. some 
sucks. you got to you got to get an x-ray dude you got to get an x-ray yeah that's that's not good i'm not trying to freak you out but you know you got to get you got to get that looked at it sounds MRI, like it's getting right? worse MRI. yeah look you'll you'll have to speak to a, a radiologist um or some sort of general practitioner and describe your symptoms and they'll be able to they'll be able to prescribe the appropriate you know uh form of x-ray yeah. for sure you know, maybe you have like an infection in there and it's just spreading. I mean, it, it sounds inflammatory to me, but it could be mechanical as well. Anyway, man, I'm going to I'm gonna keep going with the talk. Okay, uh, yeah, I absolutely love it to talk to you. Tune in another time if you need more questions asked and uh, good luck okay, with everything. Thanks. Yeah, man. Yeah, okay, man. okay, good luck, man. Have a lovely day. Thanks. Okay, bye. See you, thanks. Okay, that was a great talk. Um... Yes. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, stress relief. So I want to talk about a book now. Um, and by the way, if anyone else has any questions whatsoever, uh, you can raise your hand and ask me anything. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to match up with what I was just talking about then at all. It could be anything about tinnitus that has nothing to do with today's topic. Okay. So I want to talk about a book, another one, you know, I love books. I'm going to open up my Kindle. Uh, let me get the name of the, the author. I know the name of the book is Grain Brain. Let me just wake this sucker up. Okay. So I can, I can tell you, and this is anecdotal, and people say to me, well, Liam, I'll follow your advice when you have a scientific literature, you know, with 10,000 people in it proving that your advice uh, solves tinnitus. And I say, well, I, I don't have that, but what I do have are hundreds of testimonials and dozens of video testimonials from re real people of all gender, ages, and causes of tinnitus around the world um, describing how my advice fixed their tinnitus. And I say, oh, that's just purely anecdotal. And then what they fail to realize about what they've just said is that scientific, li scientific literature and papers are actually made up of thousands of anecdotals okay, just well controlled. If you don't have anecdotes, you don't have scientific literature. And yes, I understand the shortcomings of that. But as I'm looking for this book, I just wanted to tell you guys that when, if you are saying that right now, like, oh, I'm going to wait until this or this and but or when, I want you to be honest with yourself and just realize that all you're doing is making excuses because you don't want to start. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to bully you. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. But the longer you wait uh, to start the advice I'm telling you, potentially you could be actually extending the amount of time you have tinnitus for by a significant time because you could be doing something in your life inadvertently which is worsening your tinnitus. Living in a moldy home, living with a toxic person, eating food you're allergic to, like it's just not good. Okay, oh, whoops, I'm trying to find this book. I'm trying, to, okay, you know what, I'll just tell you what it is. It's the, it's the book's called The Grain Brain. Uh, I can't find the author because I've got too many books on here, but you'll be able to find it if you look for it. The point of this book, okay, is dealing with anxiety and hormone rectification from eliminating or severely reducing carbohydrates. There's another book, which is also fantastic, written by a personal trainer, okay, and this book is called No Grain, No Pain. No grain, no pain. I suggest you read them both, guys. If guys, instead of watching Netflix, please read a book or, or get the audiobook. I don't care. Even if you wear wired headphones and go for a walk in the sun and listen to a book for an hour, that's so much better than sifting through tinnitustalk.com or like, you know, just, I don't know, drinking alcohol with your friends or something. Do something constructive, you know, because when you get silenced, it'll all be worth it. So in this book, and I really, I read this book. Someone, I actually had a client send this to me um, after they followed my advice and their 20 years of anxiety that basically turned them into an agoraphobic, agoraphobic, which means that you can't leave the home, was fixed by cutting out plants 100%. That is absolutely crazy. 20 years of borderline agoraphobic, in their own words, on all sorts of drugs like Welbutrin, Amitriptyline, um, and other forms of benzodiazepines, uh, Lexapro, crazy drugs. They got off them themselves. I, I told them not to do it, get off them, but they did, you know, whatever. It's their life. And now they have an unusual life and their friends can't believe it. Carbohydrates destroy your brain. They destroy your nervous system. 
they destroy your ears, they destroy your organs, and they destroy your life, if I'm honest. Now, remember, I was going to say this the other time, but I forgot. Plants, most of, like the plants in a supermarket are a pernicious poison. I'll say that again. They are a pernicious poison. The word pernicious means slowly. It's a slow poison drip. So, for example, let's compare to two different plants. You have hemlock, okay, which is what um, cowbane, Socrates, used to kill himself uh, back in uh, Rome. I believe it was Rome. Um, and then you have things like kale, okay? Kale, you have a kale smoothie, you are not going to die, but you probably will have diarrhea, okay? Or constipation. Hemlock, you make a tea out of that, you're dead in two minutes. That's how it works. Different levels of plants have different levels of toxicity. However, they are all toxic. I am being serious. Go and read The Plant Paradox. Go and look at Georgia Eads' website which is, um, oh, George, uh, e, that's Georgia EDE. She's a psychiatrist. And what does she do? She gets people off of anxiety medications by increasing red meat and getting rid of plants. Plants are not food. They are not your friends. Most of the plants you are eating are not even real. They're, they're genetically modified. They don't exist in nature. If you want to get rid of anxiety, Stop using coping mechanisms like weekly acupuncture, cranial sacral therapy, um, meditation, all these things. And now I'm not saying don't do them, but I am saying there's a much better way, okay? And it involves what you put in your mouth, okay? This includes coffee, by the way. Coffee is incredibly high in oxalate too. Guys, I cannot tell you how many people have changed their lives, not even with their tonight, but their anxiety to the point where they've saved marriages and rectified relationships with friends and family. Seriously, I'm not tooting my own horn here, by cutting out carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are fucked. They all turn into sugar. They destroy your nervous system. They ruin your hormones. Stop eating them. Okay? Do it slowly, but stop. Okay, that's enough yelling for one day, I think. I'm going to end it here, guys. If anyone has a question at all, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. If anybody has a question for me about tonight or anything else, you can ask me now. I would love to hear from you. I would love to help. Uh, as you saw with the uh, gentleman before, we can take as much time as we need to uh, help you and give you support. Uh, and I say we, I mean me. Okay, great. Got a couple of people putting up their hand here. Hello. Hi, hey, how do I say your name? Signa? Uh, Sina. Sina. I was so close. Yeah. It's, <laughs> how are you? Uh, <laughs> how are um, you? I'm good. Thank you. Good morning. Um, good, good morning. I have a question about, you just mentioned carbs because I'm trying to cut out the carbs. Yeah. But I also heard that you said don't do it too fast. Yes. So yes. I was wondering how long... How long is that? Is it weeks or is it months? Because I'm, I'm, I, I tried to like cut them out immediately, and I was like, oh my god, my god, my body was craving sugar immediately. Yeah. It felt like <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yes, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 good that you said that. And I just want to take a second and tell everyone else that don't do that. Yeah, don't cut them out too quickly. It's it's not good for you. Okay, so so can I ask a couple of questions? Can, may I ask you how old you are? I'm thirty. Uh, Okay, cool. And you've probably been eating like carbs most days for like probably the entirety of your life, right? Yes, yes. <clears throat> that's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. So, you know, this is going to be a slow process. And in terms of how long you should take, I actually tell people to do it like this. Okay. And I'll explain to you the way that I think works the best for people. And it's, it's so look, two days off, one day on, and then two days on one day, uh, two days off one day on. Let me try and say that right. So for example, let's say, let's say you have a week, okay? Monday to Sunday. So you can, you can try this and see how you go. You have one day of just meat and the next day of just plants. One day of just meat and the next day of, of just plants. Then you have two days of just meat and then one day of just plants. You just kind of see what I'm doing there? Yeah. So, so you, instead of like, you know, reducing the intake and you have it every day, Instead, I, I, I'm asking you to have one day of eating just plants. Like, and when I say just plants, you can have like fruit, vegetables, 
rice, whatever, but just don't have any meat on that day because of the Randall cycle. You probably heard me talk about the dangers of combining yeah, I have, protein. Yeah. Great. And then you just extend those days and then obviously you see how you feel. And so that feeling of, yeah, you know, the, the sugar cravings and, you know, your mitochondria are not going to be fat adapted. So you're going to, it, it would have been awful, right? Like how bad was it cutting it off just straight away? Yeah. Yeah. Was, I've already was... noticed that on the plant days, I'm so hungry all the time. Yes. Oh, so you're, so you're doing that now, are you? So you're doing the uh, two days. Well, of just... I, 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 I'm not doing it completely because my body's like, <gasps> like, so yes. I've been doing, I've tried to like, um, make broth and then uh, uh, like eat eggs and meat. Yeah. Uh, I've also done liver. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I can take a couple apples uh, to like end the day off. But then the next day I'm like, oh, I need a banana or something. Um, but right. um, I'm trying to like ease into it, but it's also like then the banana made me constipated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it'll do that. It's it's yeah. funny, you know, because people people often say, and that'll be probably the potassium and the uh, fiber doing that. People say that oh, you need fiber to go to the bathroom, and it's like you know how we get your fiber from. There's only one high-powered study that exists on fiber, and it proves that consuming fiber actually negatively affects the dig digestive system. So yeah, it's just ridiculous. Let me, let me ask you this, um, along with the food aspect of things, and that's great by the way, it is gonna take some time after 30 mm. years of, of eating you know, plants and stuff like that. Let me ask you this, what else are you applying uh, in my advice? I'm, <clears throat> I tried fasting a couple of times for 20, 24 hours. Yep. Um, I've been aiming to do it once a week. Uh, then I've been doing, <clears throat> I live in Denmark, so, uh, yeah. I do polar plunging with my mom. Oh, wow. Great. A couple of times a week. Yeah. Cool. I only stay in for a few seconds, but I'm trying to work up like this Monday. I, I did it Sunday and Monday yep. and I dipped like twice, uh, yep. without the sauna and then letting my body reheat itself. Mm -hmm. and it was awesome, but I also feel very tired doing it. Yeah. But. Um, but I can't and, do like, I've been doing cold showers before, but, um, yeah. but I, I feel like polar punching is so much, yeah, uh, it gives it's, me a lot more, um, it's, it's doing it repeatedly. Yeah, it's better. And I'll tell you what, because when you're doing that, I don't know, you know, the quality of the water in Denmark coming out of the taps, but it's almost certainly going to have, like, if you heard my other talks, it's going to have like yeah. recycled estrogen and it's going to have chlorine and all this sort of crap in it. But if you go into the, the lake, which I'm sure you're doing it in a lake, right? You're, it, I'm doing it, it in the ocean, actually. Oh, amazing. Even yeah. better. Even yeah. better. So salt water. Great. So the, the salt water, it's funny. The world actually works like a battery. So the world is a big uh, magnetic and electronic uh, ball. And uh, the salt water is actually a battery. So when you get into the ocean, there's, there's negatively charged electrons in there, which actually charge your body, which is the same as grounding. So that's very, very cool. Let, let me ask you, how long have you been doing all this stuff for and how long have you had tinnitus for and how are your ears so far doing these things? Um, I started around, <laughs> this is very cliche, I started around January 1st. Okay, no, <laughs> and that's then I cool. Because like, I've been listening to you like on and off for years and then I've been trying different things. I also in the past did keto, that was before I got tinnitus. Yeah. And then I wasn't able to keep up with it because the world around me was just like, oh, no, you shouldn't. And, you know, yeah, uh, a lot of social things just uh -huh. would stand in the way. And then so I've been doing this since January 1st. And I have some pain in my ear that like comes and goes in the right side. Yeah. Um, But it was so much worse before, like New Year's. Right. Um, so, and I had a lot of anxiety and my tinnitus was just like spikes. And now I'm, now I have a few spikes, but they don't last for very long. Um, do you, do you know, do you know how you got tinnitus? Yeah, I got it from, uh, music have always been like a big part of my life. So I got it, yeah. uh, I'd say, well, when was it? It was three and a half years ago at a concert. I was yeah. wearing earplugs, but they were shit. I just bought them. Um, yes. And, uh, and it just ruined my ears. And I've actually had it before as well as a teenager, also from a concert. Yeah. But then I've also had years of like drinking, bad dieting, uh, using medicine for different things. Um, yeah. 
And you live in and you live in Denmark, so let's just you know yeah. maybe weed, weed and stuff like that. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. we've, all, we've all done that. That's cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, if you've had if you've had it for three years and you're sort of just slowly starting from January, I mean, it's it's the beginning. But you know, it, by the sounds of it, with the um, the pain in the ear, you could have a parasite in your ear, or you could have uh, oxalate because oxalate actually. There's a condition called polyradicular neuropathy, which is where when you consume, and the oxalate comes from, you know, heard we talk about this before, like um, spinach and Swiss chard and carbohydrates and coffee, if I, if I didn't really say that. And when you actually start to reduce those things from your body, that's the only time your body can get rid of it. So it might actually be pushing that stuff out of your ear if you have pain in there. Um, if that's if that pain did that pain occur before following my advice or just when you started to cut out the plants? It occurred before. I'd actually had okay. it for uh, I think a little bit over a year now. What you should um, um, okay go, did, and I visited what, the doctors and everything, but they were like, yeah, you visited the 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 uh, in Denmark we just called it an ear doctor, but I think you used the word ENT. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. uh, I visited them, there was nothing they could see, and then also just my regular doctor, and also my eye, I had some pressure behind my eye, um, and I thought, well, okay, if they can't help me, I'm just going to figure out like how to fix it myself. You, there's a uh, couple of tests you should get. Uh, yeah. the, first, the first test is called a urinary mycotoxin mold test. Yeah. You, should get, you should get that test. And uh, because you could have uh, maybe like a mold or a virus or a parasite, don't get freaked out. It's fixable. But things like uh, parasites can actually go anywhere they want in your body. If you've seen my documentary with Darren Schmidt talking about parasites, he described them like a snake in the forest. They can go in your brain, in your nervous system, in your ear. Some of them are very small, some of them are big. But mm. these sorts of things actually predispose you to getting tinnitus when you wouldn't have normally gotten it. So, for example, you obviously went to these concerts with your friends, right? Like the music concerts yeah. and... yeah. yeah. And they don't have tinnitus, do they? I imagine. Uh, no. Or, yeah, and so there, there would be there would be a reason that you have it, and they don't have it, and yeah. so it's it's just a it's it's a predisposition because the body is amazing at fixing itself. You know, like you go to a loud concert, you damage your mitochondria, you you know your nervous system and and sympathetic nervous system spikes up, but then it goes back down the next day and fixes itself. But you're, that happened with your friends, but not you. So you could be immunocompromised. You could have a problem with your sleep, apoptosis, things like that. So get the urinary mycotoxin mold test. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny when you said you went to the Hotel Arangol, just the ENT. They would have just done this, right? They just, oh, I've got, I got pain in this ear. They would have used what's called an otoscope. They looked in uh -huh. your ear. Oh, I can't see anything. You're fine. That's what they did, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, fucking useless. <laughs> just ridiculous. Like, oh, I can't see anything immediately, so it must be in your head. Um, yeah. So get those things. Follow my. Obviously, keep following my advice. Do it slowly. Cut out the carbohydrates because that feeds. If you have any mold or parasites or a metabolic dysfunction, carbohydrates will be doing that. And uh, I'm not saying you do now, by the way. I'm not. But if you do happen to smoke weed now or cigarettes or anything like that, stop. Don't do that. I'm just. I'm not. Yeah, anything. I do not. Like, I haven't had a drink for i think uh, a year and a half amazing and uh i don't smoke and there's a, i also I, I had a coffee addiction <laughs> i have to say oh, uh, okay, okay. and i've stopped drinking caffeine from new year's also I, I have been cutting it out for periods of time and then i tried having like one between christmas and new year's and i had the worst spike ever and i had to call the doctor because my ears were hurting and it was like mm. I freaked out because yeah. I thought it was going to be forever. Okay. But then I just continued so, cutting out the coffee, and now yeah. I haven't had coffee in a long time. No. So that sorry, just to, that spike occurred when you had a coffee or when you quit yes. it? Did you say? Yes. You had a I had to cut the coffee out. Yeah. For me... weeks, and then I I had a like a Nest Cafe thing. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, a few hours later, it was like my ears were hurting, and it was I felt so terrible. Yeah, let me tell you something. You should you should read the book Caffeine Blues. You should read that because that'll really open your eyes. What happens is when you have a coffee within about 40 minutes, your brain is dehydrated by 50%. Holy 50%. shit. And so what happens is in your brain, you have the neuronal cells and you have the dendrites and they're supposed to connect with each other via electricity, but they need conductivity and that conductivity is moisture because, you know, imagine sort of the analogy of... Um, 
putting a, like you have a, it's a bit of a gross analogy, but you have, you're sitting in a bathtub and you have a, a toaster and you drop the toaster in the bathtub and you get, <laughs> you get electrocuted, right? That's yeah. kind of in a crass way how the brain works. And that's how you process noise. You have the vibration turned into electricity. It travels through the vestibular cochlear nerve, goes into the brain, and you process it as the phenomenon of hearing, okay? It's one of the senses. But if you don't have that conductivity, the messages can't get sent, your brain starts to freak out and you get tinnitus. That's, a, that's essentially what is happening when you have coffee, is my, is my thoughts on that anyway. So yeah, coffee oxalates. Um, caffeine, by the way, is a very serious drug. Um, to caffeine, taurine, things like that. And it's, it's in dark chocolate, it's in alcohol, it's in coffee, it's... Um, it's everywhere, so yeah, take a break from that. Okay. But uh, yeah, so for you to understand what I'm saying to do now? So yeah, follow, yeah, yeah, I do. Follow my advice, uh, get the urinary mycotoxin mold test. If you have any mold in your urine, you know, it might be like aspergillus or borealis or something like that. Also, hmm. on, on Instagram, if you haven't heard me talk about it already, go and follow Bianca's Holistic Journey and also Awakened Spaces. These are two girls who really know their shit. And they talk a lot about mold and, you know, your living space and things like that. And this is just things that I get everyone to follow. You know, these mm -hmm. girls, no matter, no matter what your situation, but I do that. And they're also, let me know if the uh, restrictions in Denmark, uh, you know, they stop people from getting PCR tests. And I'm going to come on over because I want to see Denmark, actually. I want to come to uh, the rest of Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Um, thank you so much for your advice. This was really yeah. good. Um, I'm trying to yeah. do my best to silence this. <laughs> yeah, look, don't don't be too hard on yourself, you know, yeah. as well. Like, you don't be like, oh shit, like I cheated today, or I messed this up, or you know, uh, whatever it is, or like I'm scared. You know, it's 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 not going to be the easiest journey, but it's possible. Like, it's so doable, but it might mm -hmm. take a little, it might take a little bit of time. And as well, you live in a cold country, you yeah. know, so you're not going to have much sun. So make sure you're eating liver. Uh, to get vitamin D and decodes hexagonic acid and things like that. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Ciao. Okay. We have another person who's been patiently waiting. Margaret. Oh, don't tell me this is not going to work. Yeah, guys, don't be shy. Come on, come on in, come on into the talk and we can talk and I can, I can do my best to help you. Okay, Margaret, what I'm going to do, I swear to God, this happens every time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off hand raising and then I'm going to turn it, I'm turning it back on now. And if, if you could, if you could raise your hand again, we'll try it once more. And if it doesn't work, maybe we'll try again another day. Also, make sure you've got a strong Wi-Fi connection. Make sure you're right next to, if you have a router, <laughs> this is the only time I'd tell you to stand close to it. No, it's not working. Okay. Okay, that doesn't, oh. I'm sorry, Margo or Margaret. It doesn't seem like it's working. I really apologize about that. But just make sure you're, you um, are next to, a, next to your internet connection and you know all that sort of good stuff. Sorry. Okay, does anyone else have a question? Anything at all you want to know? Anything at all? We've been talking for a while. This is great. The replay, guys, is going to be available on YouTube. Um, and I might have to... This is definitely over an hour, so I'm going to have to cut it up into two pieces for Instagram. But it will be on YouTube, or you can listen to the replay here on Clubhouse. Okay, guys, have a lovely day. If you're trying to fix anxiety, stop using coping mechanisms and actually get to the root of it, which is mostly nutrition and diet and cutting out toxic people and oh also also okay i almost forgot to say this i have started to notice that when people stop using bluetooth headphones they their anxiety also starts to dissipate yes this is just anecdotal but it's worth giving it a go look bluetooth headphones are toxic anyway they mess with the calcium ions and potassium ions gating in the ears which is supposed to be the electricity that flows down to the, to the brain so you don't want to interfere with that give it a go if you have to use headphones Use wired headphones. Don't use anything Bluetooth and certainly don't put your phone to your ear when you're taking a call. Okay, have a lovely day. We've been talking for a while. We're going to wrap it up here and I'll probably talk again tomorrow.